First of all, hello everybody. It is a real privilege to be stood here in front of you in Colombo today. Um, Sri Lanka has a very special place in the heart of UK travel industry. For more than 40 years, Sri Lanka has been a central part of our business, developed carefully and thoughtfully over decades through the conflict years and beyond. And since the devastation of the Easter attacks, the one thing that's clear is that there is huge love for this country, particularly within Kuoni. Throughout my time at Kuoni, so many of our staff have come here, they've fallen in love with the place and the people, much as I did when I first visited in 2008. And as a result, Sri Lanka has evolved to become one of our best-selling destinations. Today, the business of selling travel, tour operating and retailing is all about partnership, and I want to touch on that today in terms of rebuilding confidence amongst tour operators. As you all know, creating a successful tourism industry doesn't happen by accident. For us in Sri Lanka, it relies on strong partnerships with our colleagues on the ground, at Whittles, at John Keels, who we regard as being part of the Kuoni family. If I can begin on a personal note, I've worked in travel for 30 years, and throughout that time, sadly, natural disasters and political crises have been an unwelcome but unavoidable constant. Over the last three decades, I've helped to steer businesses through attacks in Turkey, Egypt, Tunisia, Kenya, the USA, and Thailand. In fact, one of my very first jobs when I joined Kuoni 10 years ago was to fly out to Bangkok, where we had over 300 customers unable to get themselves home because of the ash cloud. And all of those destinations I've just mentioned have all been subject to foreign office travel restrictions at some point, but all of them have rebuilt a tourism industry. How quickly places recover depends on a whole range of factors, some outside our control, but many within. And it's those within our control that we should focus on, building resilience, planning for the worst, learning from what's gone before, releasing funds, activating plans, tracking consumer behaviour and understanding the competitive landscape. Sri Lanka isn't a simple sun, sea, sand destination. It's a unique, diverse destination which requires specialist knowledge and expertise at the point of sale. And one example we can learn from recently is Kenya. Just like Sri Lanka, Kenya is a destination which Kuoni has a long-standing relationship with. Kenya was one of our best-selling destinations when explosions killed and injured hundreds of people in Mombasa. The Foreign Office advised against all but essential travel, it had a significant impact on the tourism industry. But when that advice was relaxed a year later, the market returned remarkably quickly. Why? Because there isn't anything else like Kenya in terms of experience, product, and price. Since then, it's risen back up to our bestseller list, and we've worked hard with our agents and hotel partners to position Kenya as a premium destination, rich in nature, wildlife, and landscapes. And we've created a specialist sales team within our business who now know it inside out and they can support our frontline agents to design and tailor itineraries. Tunisia is a very different market but also worth mentioning. Before the attacks in 2015, our German sister company, Dertor, had over 100,000 passengers visiting every year. Four years on, Tunisia has still not fully recovered but the number of tourists is steadily increasing from all Western European markets. And as the price level is low, it's always been an attractive alternative to Greece and to Spain for clients with lower budgets. Keen prices, hotel renovations, increased airlift, and enhanced security have all helped to restore confidence. And security is absolutely key to reassure visitors. It's noticeable for holidaymakers on the ground in Tunisia. Most hotels, if not all, now have airport-style security at the entrances. But Tunisia have also invested in aqua parks to attract families and improve standards at hotels to help put the spotlight back on Tunisia with commitment from tour operators to invest in educationals and marketing. Tunisia shows that destinations which rely heavily on the family market take longer to recover from a security alert. The family market is more sensitive to safety and it's easier to replicate a relatively simple sun and sand holiday elsewhere. But Sri Lanka is different. Our sister company, Jules Verne, attracts an older customer base, and their best-selling tours are in the north and east of Sri Lanka, with a focus on culture, on people, and on history. This is a brand which offers tours all over the world, including to places like Iran, where customers are not deterred easily. They're interested in ancient and recent history, and that is part of the appeal. Our new brand, Meraki, 
is aimed at the other end of the spectrum. It's aimed at adventure travellers who are often trailblazers. In Sri Lanka, they want to travel on public trains, explore the street food, and have their Instagram moments. For the Kuoni brand, around a third of our business is honeymoons and special occasions. Beautiful pool villas, stunning suites, a private car and driver. They turn to us because they trust us with the most important holidays of their lives. We must continue to have a deep understanding of different market sectors and how they're evolving. Only then can we tailor experiences which appeal and build a resilient tourism industry. So I thought it would be useful to understand how people are feeling about Sri Lanka as a holiday desti destination now. So last week, just five months on from the Easter attacks, we commissioned a nationwide poll of 2,000 travellers. It's important to stress that this is not just the Kuoni database. This reflects the full spectrum of all potential holiday makers in the UK market. So, when we ask people what they associate with Sri Lanka, the good news is that people rate beautiful scenery, rich in culture, beautiful beaches, great local food, amazing wildlife, and friendly locals as their top choices. Unsafe destination ranks behind all of those factors. I'm sure if we'd conducted this poll early in May, we'd expect the results to look very different, but we should be very encouraged by this. And when it comes to negative headlines, we should also be encouraged. With some distance from the event, people don't necessarily associate Sri Lanka with negative media coverage. The media agenda moves on swiftly, and unprompted news recall after just a few months is relatively low. But we should also be realistic. For those who have seen negative headlines, there is some caution. Some 26% of people won't be considering Sri Lanka at all as a destination. There are some who will consider it after six months to a year, um, but there are still just a quarter who aren't deterred at all. The mainstream media and niche influencers can be one of our best assets when it comes to supporting recovery and regaining confidence. Being in the news headlines day after day, as Sri Lanka was, is brutal. But there is huge value in long-standing media relationships, provided they've been nurtured over time. When the news headlines move on, it's the travel influencers that can help draw people back. We asked the travel editor of The Telegraph last week for her view now. She highlights that Sri Lanka is a favourite for their readers. It's an extraordinary country with a wealth of lifetime experiences. They acknowledge when tragedy strikes, they must follow advice. But once stabilised, they're quick to inspire people to return with a whole range of creative stories from spas to motorbike tours. But there are still challenges, and we should be mindful that not everybody agrees. Another national travel editor sees it quite differently. She told us when there's so much choice out there, they want to offer readers a burst of positive inspiration and stay away from anywhere where there's been recent conflict or risk to safety. I also wanted to share some examples of our own approach at Kuoni. We took the view early on that we needed to quickly build Sri Lanka back into our sales and marketing. And I wanted to talk briefly about how we're doing that with the help of our partners. Our own business model is based on expertise. Conversations are at the heart of our business, and there's no doubt that knowledge, passion, and confidence help Sri Lanka become one of our top three destinations at the start of this year. I'm delighted to say that we're continuing to invest in expertise. Right now, we're hosting a group of 25 of the best travel agents with itineraries covering the length and breadth of this amazing island. And in fact, I'm heading from here to meet up with an educational group later this week. With a mix of our own sales teams and agents, we'll be increasing the number of experts in our stores to 140 by the end of this year. That's a reflection of the level of confidence that we have. There's no doubt that some immediate tactical pricing is required to win back customers, but we need to look beyond that. As a brand that specializes in premium travel and special occasion trips, we're looking to create more than just a price point. Our focus is enrichment, education, and inspiration. Here you can see the cover of our latest magazine. Sri Lanka makes a fantastic cover star, and the response to this edition has been fantastic. Not everyone here may know Anita Rani, but she's a very well-known television personality in the UK, famous for presenting all sorts of primetime TV shows. She also has a huge social following, particularly on Instagram. And we made a film of her visit to Sri Lanka, and we've widely shared that on emails, on YouTube channel, and in our magazine, and in online content.
And we're keeping our foot on the pedal. A new campaign launches on the 15th of October, jointly funded by Whittles and Sri Lankan Airlines, which will see Sri Lankan images in our shop windows, a homepage takeover on our website, dedicated offers, and more content in our next edition magazine. So, in summary, we are looking to the future with your help. The visitor experience is vital to get right. If people love it, they will share and create that all-important magic, positive word of mouth. We're particularly strong in the luxury market, which is evolving apace, and there are great opportunities in this sector for customers who care about the environment, care about their footprint, and seek more authentic experiences. We need to keep knowledge high amongst our own teams, particularly those who sell and influence the customer. We want our own staff who deal with customers every day to love Sri Lanka and to recommend it. By working together, staying ahead of the trends, and appealing to modern travelers across the market, we believe all the ingredients are in place to restore confidence in Sri Lanka and to create an even stronger business together. Thank you.